welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking today? We're drinking uh, Spivey Point Steam Ale. Mm. Today we're going to be talking about a classic. Probably one of the more influential horror movies that come out of the 60s, I think. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a blueprint for a lot of movies. Yeah, 1963's The Haunting, based off of the novel... Haunting of Hill House. This has kind of been like a bit of a resurrection because now there's a Netflix show called The Haunting of Hill House. So this movie was the first adaptation of that material. Mm -hmm. It was directed by Robert Wise. He directed The Day the Earth Stood Still, West Side Story, The Andromeda Strain, and uh, The Sound of Music. So like, man, there's four plus this one that we're doing. That's yeah. five like iconic movies. Yeah. Julie Harris is in this. She was in The Dark Half. Richard Johnson was in this. And uh, he was Dr. Menard in uh, Zombie. Russ Tamblin is in this. And he was also in West Side Story. And uh, he's in the new Haunting of Hill House. Lois Maxwell is in this too. She was Money Penny in all of the original James Bonds, all the way up to A View to a Kill. The movie starts off with a simple narration explaining the history of Hill House. The house is constructed 90 years ago by Hugh Crane. On uh, his wife's way there to see the house for the first time, she died in a carriage crash. Oh, yeah. This is back in the days of horse and buggy. Hugh Crane then remarries, and his second wife ends up dying in the house this time by falling down the stairs. Then Hugh Crane's daughter, Abigail, ends up inheriting the house, and she becomes a weird recluse. She hires this nurse to take care of her. She dies at night calling out to this nurse, but the nurse is busy making out with some young guy. This nurse companion has now inherited the house from Abigail. And she ends up hanging herself from the stairs in the library. So that's kind of the haunted history behind this house. Yeah. Present time, Dr. Markway is looking to investigate the paranormal activities in this famously haunted place called Hill House. He's speaking to the current owner about spending time there. And she lets him, but with one caveat. He has to include the next heir to the house, Luke in his investigations. Uh, Markway puts out invitations to several people to be included on this investigation team and he is kind of targeting people who have had paranormal experiences, experiences yeah. in the past. So we're introduced to Eleanor and she kind of lives a bit of a sad existence. Sleeps on the couch at her sister's place. She helped pay for half of the car but you know she has to beg them to use this car to go to do this investigation. She gets to the house, she's the first person there. In the house, the rest of the people meet up. Theo, a woman who has kind of had some psychic abilities. And then of course there's Luke, who's gonna be inheriting the house at some point. The doctor also explains that the house is built at weird angles, so doors will close and open by themselves. So it's not necessarily ghosts. The first night, the girls, Eleanor and Theo, they're trying to sleep. All of a sudden, they hear bangs outside of their bedroom door. Boom! Boom! And it keeps getting louder and louder as it gets closer to the door. Then all of a sudden, everything stops. They open the door. It's uh, Luke and uh, Dr. Markway. They had run off to go chase this dog, and they were outside of the house, and they ran back in. We start to hear Eleanor's thoughts. She kind of also feels like she doesn't belong anywhere, and now suddenly she's starting to feel like this is home. They feel a cold spot by the nursery. They also see writing on the wall. Eleanor starts to blame Theo that, you know, she's maybe picking on her and stuff like that. And one night while they're trying to sleep, Eleanor thinks that she's holding Theo's hand. As she wakes up and there's nothing there and she opens up her hand and it's like, well, whose hand was I holding? Dr. Markway's wife ends up showing up ends up being a real skeptic. She goes and stays in the nursery. All of a sudden they start to hear these bangs. At this point, everybody except Eleanor has been kind of yeah. skeptical yeah. about what's been going on. Yeah. Now everybody's yeah. starting to hear it. Yeah. And the door actually starts to bow. The doorknob starts to turn again. My wife's out there. I gotta go out there. No, you're not going out there. You don't know what's out there. And yeah. it starts to get really intense. Well, I'll sell you the house real cheap, doc. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's even starting to believe what's going on. 
The next day, his wife is gone. Eleanor gets sort of this feeling that she's got to climb the staircase. And it's all fucking rickety, too, and everything. Dr. Markway starts to work his way up to try and coax her down. Yeah. It's like it's all rickety and the, the bolts are all coming out of the wall. And ooh, it's going to collapse at any moment. And that's where we're going to stop it. So if you want to see what's <laughs> going to happen with Eleanor and Theodore and Dr. Markway and Luke, yeah. keep watching... The Haunting, it's more than a classic horror. I think it set the blueprint for a lot of things going forward. The first thing I noticed when I watched this movie was e Evil Dead. Evil Dead, yeah. Sam Raimi must have been a huge fan of, of this movie because the camera work... The zoom. All the zooming in on things. It's so Evil Dead. And, or yeah. Evil Dead is so The Haunting. Yeah. And Evil Dead 2. Yeah. Because there's that scene. Choo, choo, and all those sounds yeah. and the beams and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, that's purely right out of this movie. And the, why are you holding my hand so tight? You know, <laughs> yeah. That's Evil, evil Dead 2. I ain't holding your hand. <laughs> Bobby! Joe! <laughs> <laughs> where are you, girl? Clearly super influential. Came at a time, too, where horror movies were starting to get hokey. And this movie is so classy. So you don't see any ghosts. You don't see any goblins. It's all camera work and just implied and all sounds. Yeah. Amazing sound work in this movie. It's kind of ahead of its time in the way it uses sound, I think. Yeah. It also uses the characters to their fullest potential. The story is driven by all of these characters. There's the doctor in this that grounds everything and always brings it back down to reality. It all kind of revolves around Eleanor. A very tragic figure in this movie. She can be influenced very easily. Yeah. and Which is why you kind of question what happens to her. Like, is well, this all going on up here? That's just it. Is everybody seeing what she's seeing? Yeah. Because you don't really know. The movie almost seems like a metaphor, though, for Eleanor's suffering. It's not only the haunting of Hill House, it's the haunting of herself. Now, another neat thing is this movie was shot in black and white at a time where color movies was pretty much a mainstay at this point. The decision made by both the studio and the director. The black and white for this movie works perfectly. I don't think it would be nearly as effective if shot in color. This movie, for an hour and 51 minutes, is not... Boring. It goes by pretty quick and there is a lot of dialogue, but it it's all relevant to the story and you have to pay attention to it, right? It's like a, it's like a 70s slow burn movie, yeah. you know? And this movie kind of really uses all your senses to its full advantage, you yeah. know? The, the sound design of the loud bangs and stuff, visuals of all the camera work, it like takes all your senses and really kind of uses them to scare you, mm -hmm. which is perfect filmmaking for a horror movie. Not only do you hear it, the camera zooms into the door, yeah. right? And you hear the bangs, and the girls are like, they're shit scared. It just shows these quick shots, like, you know, door, the girls, yeah. door, the girls. Then they're like, you know, the sound is coming from above the door, and it shows above the door. Yeah. Then it shows the girls again. Yeah. Then it's like, you, then it goes quiet. Then you see the little doorknob and it zooms right in on the doorknob and you see the doorknob start to turn and as the viewer you're like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? You have to check out The Haunting. It basically set the standard, I think, for horror movies going forward as yeah. far as how to effectively achieve scaring somebody using a camera and, and sound. Yeah. This movie was remade in the 90s. <laughs> I remember seeing it in the theaters and hating it. It is terrible. Super over the top. It, it went against everything this movie stood for as far as holding back and not showing mm -hmm. too much. Complete opposite yeah, way. Just threw everything out the window. Yeah. If you're a fan of any haunting movies, of course, Amityville Horror. The movies like The Changeling too. Please check out The Haunting from 1963 if you haven't seen it. It's not so much a forgotten movie. It's been overshadowed by other yeah. things that have been known to do things that this movie kind of did first. Yeah, and there's you know there's remake there's a remake of it. There's a TV show of yeah. it. So maybe not too many people know that there was an original movie to yeah. all that. Check it out and keep drinking. <laughs>